Hello, welcome back. And I am really grateful to have quite a few new subs lately. So if you are new to my channel, a very, very warm welcome to you. My name is Tamara, rhymes with camera. I am a 63 year old retired nurse. I love to share makeup and health and wellness and lifestyle. And I have a passion for skincare. You know, one of the most common skin conditions that can really make our skin look much older than it is are those annoying brown spots, age spots, sun spots. So today I am coming to you with no foundation on. I do have blush, lipstick, and eye makeup on, but I really wanted you to see my skin as I share my three-prong approach to prevent, treat, and ultimately eliminate the brown spots from my 63-year-old skin. If this sounds fun to you, throw this video a thumbs up. We are gonna get into it right now. Before we get into the treatment, I am going to talk very briefly about the causes and the different types of hyperpigmentation. Number one, most common, and my particular issue is sun damage. You know, our skin's melanocytes absorb the UVA rays. They are then stimulated to produce melanin for protection. This is how we tan. Unfortunately, over time, these melanocytes can become overstimulated overproductive, produce too much melanin, which hides deep in our dermal layer, only to come to the surface many, many years later as age spots, brown spots, sun spots. That's my primary issue. Number two is melasma. Now, melasma usually has a larger pattern than sunspots. It can appear mask-like on the cheeks, on the upper lip, on the forehead. Although melasma can look like sun damage, and in fact, it is aggravated by the sun and heat, by the way, melasma's root cause is primarily hormonal. Here is the important thing to note. Some of the treatments for sun damage, such as laser, can actually aggravate the melasma and make it worse. So accurate diagnosis is critical. Number three, PIF, post-inflammatory hyperpigmentation. Inflammation can also overstimulate our melanocytes to produce too much pigment to protect ourselves, and we can wind up with brown, red, or purple spots after injuries such as acne, wounds. Even a simple scratch can result in hyperpigmentation in some people. Now, I have never had significant acne, PIF, and I have never suffered from melasma. So today I am specifically addressing the steps I am taking to treat old sun damage. It's been a journey, but I think I found the magic trifecta to prevent, treat, and ultimately even eliminate my sunspots over time. To be clear, I am not offering medical advice. I am not a dermatologist. I am not Penn Smith. I am simply sharing what I believe is working for me. Number one, first and foremost, is prevention. And by that, I mean daily sun protection. That goes without saying. Unfortunately, I didn't start taking daily sun protection or even skincare, for that matter, seriously until my 40s, which is why we're having this conversation. Without daily sun protection, SPF, and or protective clothing, and or avoiding peak sun hours, we are wasting our time and our money on skincare and skin treatments. Find an SPF you love. Find an SPF that you look forward to wearing that looks beautiful on your skin. I highly recommend all of the dermatology SPFs. I love Color Science, I love Elta MD, and so many others. I personally have an entire SPF wardrobe that I rotate through. I do SPF Roundup videos about once a year. I will link some of those videos below and stay tuned. I also have a new SPF Roundup video coming up in the next month or two. Number two, we are so lucky to live in a time where we have so many options for effective medical aesthetic treatments, such as lasers, IPLs, and BBLs. Anyway, a couple of months ago, I was in for my Botox appointment. I do use light Botox in my 11s about every six months. I have a whole video on that, which I will link below. Anyway, I was showing my provider my sunspots. I was telling her about my treatment creams, which she wholeheartedly supported. 
but she suggested that in conjunction with my treatment creams, I might wanna try a laser or a BBL to complement my skincare and kick back that pigment even more. She suggested a Moxie, which is a non-ablative laser, and a BBL broadband light. Now normally, the Moxie is about $500 and the BBL is about $300, they were having a special, a Moxie BBL combo for only $500. So of course I made an appointment. Like I said, the Moxie is a non-ablative laser with a much shorter downtime than some of the more aggressive ablative lasers such as Halo and Fraxel. The Moxie more gently resurfaces the skin, smooths the texture and reduces pigment. Now the BBL, broad band light, is not actually a laser. It uses light energy to break up the pigment so it can slough up. Caution, these types of treatments can actually aggravate melasma and make it worse. So please, please consult a qualified medical professional. Anyway, I had the treatments a few weeks ago when I returned from India. The treatment itself was fast and easy and surprisingly comfortable. She first applied a numbing cream for about 30 minutes and then the treatment itself took about 20 or 30 minutes. Right after the treatment, my face was very, very red and felt extremely hot, almost like it was on fire. You know, they say it feels like a bad sunburn. I've never had a sunburn like that. It wasn't painful, but it was very, very uncomfortable. So she gave me this Avan Thermal Spring Water to cool down my face. And I use this about every five or 10 minutes for the first couple of hours just to keep that heat down. The heat did dissipate after a couple of hours, but I have to say, this was a lifesaver. I think I used this whole bottle up. Anyway, other than that, aftercare was super simple. A very gentle cleanser, no actives, a very gentle moisturizer, no actives, and sunscreen, of course, if I were to be going outside. She said, I could wear makeup the next day, but I chose not to. My skin was quite red for several days and it felt very, very dry with an incredibly rough texture. It actually felt like sandpaper. Those dark spots turned dark brown and it looked like coffee grounds scattered on my face. Those are actually called MENDS, M-E-N-D, Microscopic Epidermal Necrotic Debris, MENDS. Now these MENDS gradually slough off on their own. You're supposed to not pick them, not exfoliate them, just let them fall off on their own. So over the next few days, that sandpaper-like feeling, the redness, the MENDS, everything sort of resolved on its own. And after five or six days, my skin was beautiful and glowing and radiant with a significant reduction in the brown spots. Now the brown spots did not totally disappear. They do say it takes a few treatments to totally eliminate them. But I am really happy after just one treatment. They also recommend probably three to five treatments a year for maintenance. I am planning to do probably two treatments a year, mostly because of the cost. I am planning to do another one in the fall and probably one in the spring again next year after any winter vacation I might have. And this way I can sort of clean up any pigment that I may have picked up over the summer or over winter vacation. I am gonna link a video in the description box below that I found fascinating it is a video by Dr. Amir Karam where he explains how these types of treatments, lasers, BBLs, can work synergistically and complement our skincare. But in a nutshell, how he explained it is this. Yes, BBLs and labors can drastically reduce our brown spots. The problem is we always have more pigment coming up from the dermal layer creating new brown spots. The analogy he used was this. In the fall, we have leaves that fall off the tree. We rake them up off the yard for a nice, clean yard. Well, the next day, we have more leaves that fell from the tree. He likened the BBL and lasers 
to raking the leaves off the yard, getting rid of the brown spots, and he likened SPF and skincare to preventing the leaves from falling in the first place. So his opinion is these work synergistically together to complement each other for the best results possible. So that's where number three comes in, our topical treatment creams, the actives that we include in our skincare. Now I'm not gonna get deep into the scientific weeds here, but I am gonna give you a list of actives that have been clinically proven to be effective either by having an anti-inflammatory effect and or by actually suppressing the melanocytes to prevent them from producing and or spreading pigment. Now this list is not all inclusive. I'm sure there are many more, but these are the actives that are the most commonly accepted clinically effective pigment fighters. At the very top of the list, we have the gold standard, which is prescription hydroquinone. Again, the gold standard and available only by prescription. Another prescription, tretinoin is very effective against hyperpigmentation. On the over-the-counter side, we have kojic acid, azelaic acid, which is over-the-counter, but at higher strengths, you do need a prescription. Tranexamic acid, licorice root, alpha arbutin. Again, I'm sure there are many more actives, but these are some of the most commonly accepted effective pigment fighters. I do want to mention some additional actives that have a supportive antioxidant role to brighten the skin, and these are vitamin C, L ascorbic acid, niacinamide, green tea, resveratrol, and many more. Now, while these aren't necessarily melanocyte inhibitors, again, they have a very important supportive role by protecting our skin against oxidative damage. Over the years, I have tried many, many over-the-counter pigment-fighting serums and treatment creams. You know, I'm sure they all help keep my pigment somewhat at bay, but none of them ever seem to make that huge of a difference. Having said that, I am going to link some very highly rated over-the-counter pigment-fighting serums and treatment creams so you can do your own research. I am sure you're noticing a change in the lighting. That is because as I was reviewing yesterday's footage, for some reason I lost this portion of my footage. I am refilming on a much sunnier day, thus the change in the lighting. And I also noticed my floral painting was upside down. You know, that floral painting sits in front of my TV. Of course, I take it down to watch TV, and obviously, <laughs> I put it back upside down, which I thought was sort of funny. I also noticed my skin appeared a little bit pink. Part of that may have been the lighting, and part of that is something that I'm gonna talk about in just a moment. Anyway, back to the topic at hand, topical treatment creams. My personal favorite treatment creams are my two agency prescription treatment creams. You know, March is my one year anniversary using agency. I love agency both as a client patient and as a partner. So a huge thank you to agency for sponsoring this portion of today's video. What I love about agency is I'm getting so many clinically proven prescription strength actives to treat not only the classic signs of aging, such as lines and wrinkles, but our powerhouses that prevent and treat my sunspots. I've talked about Agency many times, so I will be brief, but if you are new here, Agency is an online dermatology service. Super easy. You simply answer an online questionnaire, submit photos of your clean face, and a dermatology professional will assess your skin and prescribe a customized treatment cream or creams based on your individual needs and concerns. Dermatology is a subscription service that is very customizable, both in terms of options for treatment creams and options for frequency of delivery. And I love that we get our own online dermatology professional that can customize our formulas over time as well as answer any questions we may have. I use my dark spot formula, both AM and PM. It comes in an airtight package with a pump. There is the texture. Anyway, 
my dark spot formula contains 4% hydroquinone, which is available only by prescription and is considered the gold standard to prevent and to treat hyperpigmentation. It also contains kojic acid 4%, azelaic acid 3%, and resveratrol 1%. Now the thing about hydroquinone is you must cycle on and off every two months. So medical supervision is super, super important. On my off cycle, my dark spot formula contains azelaic acid 10%, kojic acid 4%, resveratrol 1% and green tea extract 2%. My agency future formula contains not only prescription 0.1% tretinoin, the gold standard in anti-aging, and helps prevent and treat dark spots with these additional actives. Azelaic acid 5%, tranexamic acid 5%, and niacinamide 4%. All of these actives are super potent anti-aging, anti-pigment, antioxidant, anti-inflammatory powerhouses that work together to build collagen, treat wrinkles, and prevent and reduce hyperpigmentation. If you are interested in researching or trying agency, I will put a link on the screen here as well as in the description box below. Of course, your prescription will depend on your individual consult with your dermatology provider. So these are my three main pillars of my battle against my sunspots. Number one, daily SPF. None of this other stuff matters if we are not protecting our skin from the sun every single day. Number two, I am super happy I finally got my Moxie BBL. I think my skin looked beautiful. I'm really happy with the results. And I am planning to incorporate that into my skincare routine like I said earlier, probably twice a year, once in the fall and once in the spring. And number three, I will not be without my agency prescription treatment creams to treat not only the signs of aging, but it really helps keep my pigment at bay. The other thing I want to very briefly mention, because I do think it helps, and I always forget to talk about it when I'm doing my skincare videos. Anyway, I do use either an AHA or a pumpkin enzyme exfoliating treatment mask about once a week, depending on how my skin is looking and feeling. By removing the superficial dead skin cells, it gives our skin a glow, and I do think it helps reduce the appearance of the sunspots. Some of my favorites include the Drunk Elephant TLC Sukari Baby Facial. It's expensive, but this is my third one. I love it. I've been using this for about three years. If my skin isn't quite feeling up to that strength, it is a pretty strong mask, I will use either my Dermatology Pumpkin Enzyme Mask or my Bay Harbor Beauty Pumpkin Enzyme Mask. Both gorgeous but a little bit more gentle enzyme masks. Now, many people enjoy the Ordinary AHA Mask, the one, the Red Serum. I find that one to be a little bit too strong for my skin. Anyway, insider secret, I usually do one of these masks the night before filming to ensure my skin is extra glowy. However, yesterday was filming day and I realized I had forgotten to do a treatment mask the night before. So yesterday morning, a couple of hours before filming, I did my Drunk Elephant Sukari Baby Facial because I wanted my skin to look as nice as possible because I knew I wasn't going to be wearing any foundation. Anyway, it did make my skin appear a little bit pink on camera. Lesson learned, if you are doing any uh, AHA or pumpkin enzyme, first do a patch test because they can be irritating. And secondly, don't do them the day of an event. Do them the day before or a couple of days before. So any slight pinkness has a chance to calm down. Now I am not wearing any foundation and you can see 24 hours after my Sukari Baby Facial, my skin is not red, it is not irritated, it is just, in my opinion, pretty and glowy. To be clear, my skin is far from perfect. But overall, I'm in a really happy place with my 63-year-old skin. It does take consistency and it does take work. Luckily, I truly enjoy skincare. To me, skincare is self-care. 
Anyway, I would love to hear from you. What has worked for you? What has not worked for you? You know, my favorite part of YouTube is chatting with you in the comment box. I love the sharing. I love getting to know you. And I always learn so much from you. With all that being said, I hope you have yourself a great day, a wonderful week, and I hope to see you in my next video. Take care. Bye. But much less intense than ablative lasers such as Hazel, Hazel, Halo. Ablative lasers such as Fraxel and Hazel. Mm -hmm. Not Hazel. Such as Hazel, uh, Hazel. <laughs> such as Hazel, not Hazel, Halo.